Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Firstly, I would like to thank those people in the gallery for making the very long trip down here today. You will get home very late, but we are very pleased that you are here and we welcome you. It is an enormous privilege to be elected by your community. and I was elected because I share the values of the people in my community, of justice, fairness and equality. And I promised that I would stand up for those values in this place. To me, it is fair and it is just to have an essential public service that meet the needs of the community and, of course, that includes public transport. Mm -hmm. For those who cannot drive or for those who choose not to drive, a good public transport system ensures that they can get to where they need to go. It means they are independent. It means that they are mobile. It means that no matter who you are, that you can access essential services employment opportunities and, indeed, educational opportunities. But in January this year, all of that changed for the people who live in our area. It changed their lives dramatically. When I sought a meeting last year to discuss my concerns before the changes were to come into effect with the Minister for Transport, he said to me in this chamber, guess what? Welcome to opposition. And, Madam Spe Mr Speaker, that arrogance Order. has characterised the Minister's approach on this issue. For the last four months, the Minister for Transport has sat very smugly in this chamber and ignored the chaos that he created. He has belligerently deflected the legitimate concerns and criticisms raised by my colleagues and myself saying he sees no evidence that people are worse off. Oh. He wheels out his cronies to peddle the spin that this is a world-class transport system, but we know, and those in the gallery know, that that is a far cry from the reality of what we live with. Mm -hmm. What we've got is poor connectivity, blowouts in journey times, reduced operating hours and, of course, cuts to very vital services. If the minister wants evidence, well, I've got it in spades. In February this year, we had a meeting and more than a thousand people turned up to protest against the changes and to hear the stories of people who were affected by those changes. Yeah. In March, we marched and the police advised me that there were almost a thousand people there as well. Yeah. And there are 10,000 people that have signed this petition so that we can force the government to come in here and debate this issue today. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, we tabled another 10,000 signatures. So we'll be back here again next month. Yeah. And let me tell you, we won't stop until we have our vital services reinstated. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the petition calls on the Minister for Transport to intervene and force the private provider to restore direct services to key destinations like Charlestown. Last month, the Minister claimed there would be a review within three months of the service beginning. Well, guess what? It's three months tomorrow and we've seen absolutely nothing. Change. History has taught us anything. It is that whatever the minister says, it should be treated with caution and cynicism. <laughs> After the fake consultation from last year, which led to the disastrous network that we've got now, the private provider has said that they would tweak or refine the network and they have said that they would have a second round of consultation. Well, we've heard nothing from them, nothing at all, and we don't expect to because it's fake consultation all the way. Mm -hmm. Our community has no confidence that the minister can do his job. The minister tells us that patronage has gone up. His own website tells us different. They tell us that it's 11,500 down on last year's figures. He can't even get the figures right. What I will say is that people are abandoning public transport. It does not meet their needs. It is unreliable. It takes twice as long. In fact, the only full buses getting around Newcastle today were the ones you were on. People are being left behind by this government. There is no justice and there is no fairness in it at all. If the stories that we hear daily aren't enough, how about this one? Premier and Cabinet released last week its Hunter update. The 
government's identified the Hunter as a youth unemployment hotspot. Guess what the greatest barrier is? Transport! Shame. 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 Time has expired. Shame.